we're live. And we're going to talk about some of my favorite types of comic books. Horror comic books. Ooh, that's very cool. But mm-hmm. horror comics from the golden age. <gasps> that's ah. even better. Russ, why do we need to talk about this, though, now? Because this is September, right? Shouldn't we be waiting a little bit? So we're actually gearing up for something really, really cool. We got contacted by Shudder, and Shudder is the streaming horror movie service, and we actually have three passes to give away for a year-long membership to Shudder. So we wanted to do something. We were going to count down the top 10 Golden Age horror books, and at the end of the video, we're going to be giving away three passes to people who like and subscribe and comment down below. Ooh. What a deal. Absolutely. I am a subscriber, a paid subscriber to Shudder. I recommend the service. I'm a huge horror fan. And as so are you. One for each of us, and then we'll give one to the audience. Right? <laughs> oh, that's, that's oh, how, is that how that's going to work? That's no. yeah. Two no, for me. <laughs> one for Russ. One, you know, I need one, one for, for each it. device. See? There yeah. you go. There you go. Well, Cancel we have, the whole video. We do have three passes to give to the audience, and we have a list that has been generated, not by us, mm-hmm. but by the Bible. The Overstreet Price Guide, the 48th edition. And without further ado, I think we should begin. Excellent. Ryan, Excellent. why don't you kick us off with number 10? Ah, number 10, House of Mystery, number one. Near Mint goes for $4,500. Nice. Yes, this is a freaking classic. Fit in in Constantine's pocket. That's what I heard. Is it a literal house? Is that what's, is that what's happening? Yeah. What? So he carries a house around? He sure does. You need to watch the Justice League Dark movie. It's so good. Don't it's it's. I watched it last night. It's on Hulu. It's so good. Okay. Well, and I have it on DVD. It actually comes with a little Constantine figure. It's so which good. Is That's in the, the bathroom. bathroom. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> this is adorable. <laughs> but something cool about House of Mystery number one. Okay. It's up two percent year over year. Every year. This year. Okay. Yeah, just, just this year. Climbing. It's climbing, and there's also. Um, this is like one of the longest running DC comic books, I believe. Yeah, it keeps coming in and out. It's like it was there in the 50s and they brought it back in the 60s and then it happened again in the 70s and they're doing more of them. There was a Vertigo House of Mystery and it's just one of these constants that as long as DC's been around, they've had this horror title. Oh, and Kurt Swan? Right, yeah, he did one of the uh, stories in that first issue. It's uh, only like eight pages, I believe. Yeah, one of because it's an anthology of, I think, eight stories, actually. But and yeah. he would go on to do eight ton of superman super important comic work yeah e- easily 40 years of superman i mean just 50s 60s 70s 80s he did tons and tons of superman work and it's very cool to see some of this early stuff that he was doing in a horror anthology he got a eisner didn't he yeah he did posthumously yeah. yeah yeah all right moving on to number nine this is actually one of my personal grails i've been after for a long time um shout out to john hill who showed me the first one that i've seen um crime patrol number 15 this is the first appearance of one of the godfathers of horror, the Crypt Keeper. And we're going to know the Crypt Keeper from Tales from the Crypt, um, a very popular EC Golden Age run, mm-hmm. but also a very good HBO show. I actually owned all those DVDs. And two fantastic today. movies. Yeah. Portello of Blood was so good. It's all good, man. Yeah, I know. It really Except, was. Okay, I have one complaint about Tales from the Crypt, though, the show. Yeah. The last episode is an animated show. It's an an, they animated it and it was such a letdown. They also like, had like three seasons of the animated series, though. They did. Mm-hmm. It, it would go Come on to do that, I believe. Yeah, did but, not know any of that. Yeah, it's, it's, it really was a letdown for me because it's like, oh, there's only one more left. Oh, and then it's animated. Yeah, yeah no good. But this book is going for five thousand dollars. And these prices that we're mentioning, these are all in near mint minus. And this book that came out in 1949 is up four percent year over year. Not that too shabby. Crazy. That is absolutely, absolutely crazy. Coming in at number eight, we have Haunt of Fear number 15, which it's another EC comic. Um, this one was selling for $5,700, which actually is 2% up. It's from June 1950. It used to be Gunfighter. It was Gunfighter 1 through 14, and then Haunt of Fear was number 15. And you'll notice that Crime Patrol and Haunt of Fear and a few of these other ones, they start, their first issues are at weird numbers. And the interesting thing is that a lot of these comic books, the Library of Congress had to issue special SKUs, special numbers, and you had to keep the same numbering and you couldn't change them, which is one of the reasons why we see things like Incredible Hulk 102 
comes out of Tales to Astonish. Or like Cap 100. Absolutely, which came out of Tales of Suspense. So you've got these things that, especially back in EC, you had Crime Patrol, Crime Patrol, Crime Patrol, Haunt of Fear, Gunfighter, you know, that whole thing. It was very cool how you see these numberings having to catch up with each other. Haunt of Fear, issue number 15, but marking number one in the yep. series. Classic. That Classic. doesn't sound confusing at all. Oh, it doesn't. Uh, numbering. <laughs> it confuses nobody. Oh, nope. Nobody in history. Nobody at this table either. Hit us up with number seven, Mr. Fire Guy Ryan. Coming in at number seven, we have Crypt of Terror 17, which is the first Crypt Keeper and Tales of Suspense in its own title instead of introduced in that crime comic we discussed earlier. Yeah. That one's going for $6,000 right now. Heck yeah. Interesting that the first appearance is a little bit less than the first appearance in his own title. I find that interesting. Well, and I think a lot of it is just because there are fewer people who are looking for the one that says Crime Patrol, exactly. even though it is the first appearance. That's you want point. the one that yep. says, okay. it's a horror book. Yep. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Coming out in April 1950, and we are actually not seeing a rise in price year over year for this book. Mm -hmm. But we do have word of a Tales from the Crypt show that M. Night Shyamalan is in production of making. I heard but about that. I it's don't been think... like a couple of years now, and I haven't heard anything about it. He's too movement. busy eating at Hooters. Sorry. Well done. Random reference. <laughs> <Got C -split. laughs> For that reference to make sense, you I need to see that. C-Split. It's split. really good. We're going to be doing some episodes on the what will be the Unbreakable Trilogy, 100%. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so That's good. exciting. Okay, so we're going to move on now to number six on the list. We have Vault of Horror number 12. Now, this started out as War Against Crime. This is another one of those issues that switched on over. We went from a war story to a horror story. This is the first issue of Vault of Horror. So very similar to what Russ just mentioned. Um, switching the title and starting out a new series that would forever change horror. And we have a comic book coming in at $10,500. It's a lot of guacamole. Yeah, it is. And a book from 1950. Ooh, it's gorgeous. This is one of my favorite horror covers because it features a gentleman that's on a rack. Mm -hmm. And the rack is in a museum, and it's supposed to be like a a, a, a museum filled with torture devices. Yeah. And the people there, the guide that they're like showing the rack off to, think that this person is on the rack as a dummy. And the person who's a dummy is not a dummy. He's a human. He's like, don't they know I'm not a dummy? And they're just like stretching him on the cover. It's terrible. It's terrifying. And this is what horror is about. That's very, very cool. So number five, we have uh, Tales of Terror Annual number one. This is a great EC comic annual. And it is an iconic cover by Al Feldstein. It's one of those things that you've just seen this reprinted multiple, multiple mm -hmm. times. Something I did not know about this and actually found out when doing some research for this Um in order to make this annual, they went around the EC offices and found all of the previous EC comics from the previous year that hadn't sold, took the covers off, and rebound them into an annual. So every single one of these EC annuals you get for these three years could be basically any EC comic in any EC order. And every single one that you get has four comics that were not reprinted. They were repurposed from the original print run to be able to release this annual. What a great way to reuse this. They were originally 10 cents a piece and they sold the annual for 25 cents to basically get out the remainders. And kept that same cover. Absolutely crazy. So this one's going for $10,800. It was released in mid-1951 and this price has gone up 4%. Whoa. That's good. That's such an iconic cover. Very, very cool. You got the guy reading there and all of the spooks around them mm -hmm. and all cool stuff. You know, and that story, I think, makes it that much cooler. Mm -hmm. Like hearing like that there's more history to how this book was put together besides just a random one-off story. You could right. buy 10 of them and all of them could be different. Like that right there sounds like an awesome <laughs> collection yeah. right there yeah. of raw books. That would be something that I would actually like to not have slapped. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to see the different stories, read them, and collect them all. Right, and figure out what actual ones they came from. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Loving the knowledge. Ryan, That's hit trippy. us up with that number four. Number four, Tales to Astonish. Number one, Mr. Jack Kirby. To the king. The king. That one is from uh, January 1959. That's almost 60 years old now. That's right. Wow. Ah, Mr. Kirby. That's from uh, way back when they weren't even Marvel Comics yet. That was in the Atlas days. That's mm. right. Ah, that's going for $12,000. <sighs> we have number three on the list, Strange Tales number one. Another one of those Atlas 
pre-Marvel comic books. This is like Stan Lee's 29 when this came out. Yeah. yeah. Already leading charge, taking reign. He he moved from writing to being able to be head editor in charge and creating lots of things very quickly at in that company. 1951. Mm-hmm. Boom. That's awesome. Up 14% year over year with a whopping price of $12,500. Wow. Well done, Stan. You wrote a good one. Definitely he did. So this one, my absolute honor to talk about number two. This is absolutely considered the first horror comic, eerie number one. Um, Joe Kubert actually did a story on the interior. We've bought, got Bob Fujitani that did her story on the interior. It is really the first horror comic. It's such a great, iconic cover. It's very much this Dracula Nosferatu type guy creeping out up on some woman in a red dress. Just, who's all oof. Yeah, and again, it's a bondage cover. It's from 1947. So a lot of these things we're talking about are 50 and 51, which is the core of when a lot of these horror codes the pre-code stuff before the comics code got mm-hmm. in and started messing with everything 1947 dracula story just killing it january 1947 even this if you can find it thirteen thousand dollars and it's gone up eight percent since the last year this is just moving this is one of those books there was a 90 that I saw online slabbed by CGC, and it was gorgeous. And it wasn't for sale. It was probably in someone's private collection, but I got to see a picture of it. It was oh, very hot. This is one of my all-time favorite covers, too. Horror comics at its best. Kubert has done multiple covers on this list, too. You notice that? He's worked a lot on this stuff, yeah. This guy knows his stuff. Mm-hmm. It's good. It's good. And we're going to move on to number one. Number one on the list. Coming in strong. Journey into Mystery, number one. All right, this is another Coupere cover. Kind of foreshadowed it there. $16,000 in near mint minus. Let that sink in a little bit. Well, not as expensive as number 83, but still a great one for a pre-code horror. For a horror book? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. It's good to see horror get this much love. And this book is about a man who decides to um, make money by reselling flowers he stole from the grave. And you know what? That's going to piss off some dead people. And sure enough, they go after him. Very, very cool. Very cool. Larry so. David did that in Kibir Enthusiasm. That's Ooh. what that makes me think of. There you uh, go. <laughs> there you go. Work out. So up 14% year over year, a book coming out in 1952, number one on the list. It's awesome. you know, And it's awesome to like be able to go through these old um, horror comics. I'm mm-hmm. excited to see what kind of horror comics grace this table now that we have Jeff, the Golden Age guru, joining the team. Yeah, we're definitely going to be getting yeah. some more cool Golden Age horror stuff and other types of horror. So I want to know from the audience what your favorite covers were of the uh, the 10 Golden Age horror comics that we just broke down. Yeah. it's a good question. Put your answers in the comment section below. There's some very good covers that we just went over to. Like, I'm excited. You know what you can do? If you comment and like and subscribe... You're going to go in for a random giveaway. Yep. We have three of these shutter passes that we're going to be giving away. And uh, any comment down below will help. But let us know about your favorite horror comics. And we just want to hear from you. Ooh, we do appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. And as always, geek responsibly. Enough said. Thanks so much for watching the video. Sincerely appreciate all of you, every single one of you. Shout out to all the new subscribers who are growing like crazy. And reminder, I'm going to be on the East Coast next week at New York City Comic Con. So if you see me, come say hi. We'd love to meet you guys. 